will get you back on a solid foundation. A solid foundation is due west. We'll get down to the bottom when it comes to your foundation. Our technology and quality translates to your salvation. Give a call, we'll be there. We're the experts in repair. We'll get you back on a solid foundation. A solid foundation is due west. Hi, I'm Jim Dutton. And I'm Kenny Dutton. Now during this video, we're gonna go through a lot of different things. We're gonna go through a house having foundation repair and preventative maintenance because that's really critical in maintaining your home. Things such as root barriers, mm -hmm. irrigation systems. There's a lot of things you can do to help avoid having a foundation problem in the future. Now we understand all this stuff is expensive, but if you hire the wrong contractor, you're gonna be paying for it twice. That's even more expensive. About a third of our work is coming behind another company and redoing what somebody already paid to have done before. And you really need to understand if you're doing foundation repair, you got three tries. At that point, there's no space left to put piers. You're stuck with using the piers that somebody else did wrong. You know, when it comes to choosing the right foundation company, not all foundation companies are the same. One of the biggest questions people typically have is, what's it gonna do to my landscaping? What about my entry porch, the inside of my house? Am I gonna be able to stay in my house while this work's being done? Well, what about life as normal? Well, today, we're gonna show you why, when you want the best, you call Due West. We're gonna do a job start to finish and show you exactly what you can expect when you hire Due West Foundation Repair. So part of the process Due West goes through on every job is to do a static test before and after leveling. Now what that consists of is blocking the sewer exit where the water comes out, filling the entire system with water and making sure it holds. Key reason for that, if you got a leak, that can cause you additional foundation problems down the road if it's not addressed. Number two, if there is a leak, you want to get that addressed possibly with your insurance company. Now, most homeowners don't have coverage for accidental discharge, but if you do, it's critical it's addressed before the house is lifted. You can put the piers in, you just can't level first. So the things that are involved in doing a proper static test, this clean out is quite a bit lower than the foundation itself. So. This little riser will be added in order to get the water level up where it needs to be. So I'm gonna let the plumbers go ahead and get going on the static test. We're getting close to having this filled now. And what'll happen is the water's gonna bounce up and down just a little bit till it settles out in the pipe, gets all the air pockets out, all the stuff that can change the elevation. Then, we're gonna let it sit. And we monitor it for 20 minutes to see if there's any drop. If there's drop, there's a leak. If there's a leak, then it can be isolated, find exactly where the leak is so that it can be addressed. Normally, we do not address leaks though until after leveling because during the leveling process, something could pull loose. And if you've already got a leak, why isolate and find a leak now just have to do it again after leveling. So the reason for testing the sprinkler system on every single job is to make sure that one, it's working before we get here, two, it's working when we leave again. That saves you a lot of money in the long run on having somebody else come behind us to do repairs. Most municipalities, they require a permit for doing foundation repair. And I'm not gonna say all of them do. The bigger problem, most contractors don't bother pulling those permits for foundation repair. It is a critical part of getting your home inspected and making sure you're up to codes when you're having work like this done. The other thing, and this is Texas state law, you need a call before you dig. And you have the gas company come out, you have the electric company come out, all your utilities, uh, the phone company, they all come out and mark where their lines are. Now, are these lines perfect? Absolutely not. They allow for 18 inches either side of that line for where the 
particular line is buried. So even though the line is marked here, it actually may be over here. So you still got to take care in digging stuff up. But this is a critical part, again, that a lot of companies tend to skip. At Due West, we always call before we dig. So once we've done the layout and marked where all the piers are going, the first step is to lay plywood down to protect your yard. Because when we're finished, you don't want to see your yard all cut up. So we lay plywood, all the dirt goes on the plywood to keep things nice and neat when we leave. Again, it's gonna be a little messy while we're working here, but the whole intention is to clean it up to where you don't know we were here when we're done. So on this particular house, they got a beautiful brick entryway. One of the things we're gonna do, instead of jackhammering and having to replace the brick, which is an option, and a lot of times people think, well, that's so much cheaper than tunneling. It is until it comes time to put all that brick back in. That adds to the cost, and really by the time you put all the cleanup back in, as far as adding the brick back, you would have been better off to tunnel to begin with. And keep in mind, at Due West, our warranty covers the tunneling. So if we tunnel the job for access the first time, if we ever do have to come back, which is extremely rare, we would tunnel again the second time. Many companies, they're charging you for that second tunnel. When we're doing foundation repair and we're installing a friction bearing pile, normally we'll start off by digging a two foot by two foot hole in the ground. And that gives us enough room to get a person down under the edge of the foundation to start our work. When Due West installs piling, a lot of homeowners think that we're pushing the piling down to a, a solid surface on the bottom of it. And the reality is we're pushing a friction bearing pile. We're putting the cylinders down into the ground, one on top of the other and it's displacing the soil as it goes down and builds skin friction up the sides of the column and that's what actually holds the piling in place. One of the things we do a little bit differently than a lot of companies is we'll drive our piling down through the water. We'll put water at the bottom of the hole. And the reason we do that is it wets the concrete and wets the soil right there so it lubricates the piling as it goes down and it actually helps us get deeper penetration. On average, by running the piling through water this way, we'll get about two to three feet deeper with each piling than most other companies. When we start driving a piling, we want to keep working on that piling and pushing it into the ground. We don't want to stop during the process for any length of time. And the reason that is, once we start pushing this into the ground, it's displacing the soil as it goes. If we stop driving on it for any length of time, the soil's going to want to get back where it originally was, and it'll make it harder to get the piling going again. So one of the things we do not want to do is stop and go to lunch while we're driving a piling into the ground. We want to continue with it and get it finished so we get better penetration. Now that we got the piling going down into the ground, we're just going to keep going one cylinder on top of the other cylinder and continue pushing until what we call refusal is hit, where the piling stops wanting to go into the ground and the structure begins to want to raise up. The cylinder for our ultra pile has a hole down the center of it. And the reason we have the hole in here is for jetting capabilities. If we're in an area where we're not getting deep enough penetration, we've got the ability to hydrojet down the center of our piling to either remove sandy soils that are in our way or lubricate the clay soils that are at the base of the piling and drive for deeper penetration. Once we finish driving our piling, this hole will allow us to put steel rebar down through the center of it. If we're working on a perimeter hole, we'll run steel rebar through the center of it. If we're working in a tunnel, we'll run cable down through the center of it. And then we'll grout it in solid so that it closes that opening there. We don't want moisture transferring down through it later on. One of the big benefits with the friction bearing pile is it's self-testing. On the particular structure we're working on today, this grade beam is 30 inch plus deep into the ground, which adds a lot of extra weight. It's 30 inches deep, plus it's more than a foot thick. With the friction bearing pile, we're using the weight of the structure as a ballast to push with, so that extra weight automatically makes us go deeper and puts a stronger piling in the ground. Another benefit of the way Due West installs their reinforcement after putting the piling into the ground is we can verify our vertical alignment. I can't get the steel reinforcement down the center of it without having these things perfectly aligned. 
But the reality is when we're installing our piling, as we're pushing these cylinders into the ground, one on top of the other, we've got equal pressure of soil around the perimeter of it. So when we relieve the pressure of the jack to install the next cylinder section, that equal pressure of soil actually keeps these things and keeps them vertically aligned. So they push one on top of the other perfectly straight. When we excavate our holes for installing piling, we need to get at least 27 inches of clearance below the bottom of the grade beam of the structure. And the reason we need that 27 inches is I want to have room to put water at the base of the piling that we're driving our cylinders through and it gives us room for our one foot tall cylinder sections and our ram on top of that to press the piling in the ground with. When we're installing our piling we're using a, an electric pump that pumps hydraulic fluid into a hose at 10,000 psi and what's on top of our cylinder there is a ram. On a residential structure like this, typically I'm using a 25 or 26 ton ram to push our piling in the ground. But the reality is if I'm working on something even heavier than this, I can run a 30 ton or a 50 ton or even a 100 ton ram on top of our cylinders if I'm working on something heavy industrial and push into the ground with the same equipment. Now that the piling's installed, we're going to put a collar up around the top of the piling and fill that with mortar as we put our reinforcement down through the center. The mortar down in there will help seal the hole so moisture is not going to transfer through the piling later on. We want to try to avoid water going down through the center of this later because moisture change in the soil allows the soil to move. This particular pile is about 28 feet deep and we've got continuous reinforcement all the way down through the center of it. Now that we're finished installing the reinforcement and the mortar in the center, we're going to install the pile cap on top of that. The pile cap here will allow us to run a jack on one side and shim material on the other side so when it comes time to pick up the structure and actually level it, we'll have room to do both jack up the structure and support it with our shimming material at the same time. Once we finish driving the piling and install the pile cap, we're going to want to pressure up the piling again to set the weight of the structure on it and keep the piling from wanting to spring back up out of the ground. Once we got the pile cap installed and the shim material on it, we're going to pressure the piling back up immediately after everything's ready. And the reason we want to do that, and this is a crucial step many companies miss, if we don't keep the pressure of the structure down on the piling, the bending moment we have in the soil and the bulb of pressure at the base of it will tend to get the piling to spring back upward a little bit and we'll lose a little bit of our safety factor. And we're all about trying to keep a good safety factor with a lifetime warranty on the product. We want to make sure we do everything we can to keep it from moving in the future. All right, so this is where we had the tunnel entrance. And you know, there's a lot of dirt that came out through the tunnel. When we're finished, we pack it back. That grass that we had set aside, we put it back on top. But again, you gotta keep it watered. If you don't give that water every single day, it will die on you. Not that big a deal. The grass will spread out if it does die, but it's a lot easier if you keep it watered and take care of it. Because you're gonna notice we left it mounded a little bit. The water will help settle it down and give you a nice flat area again. Quite frankly, the cleanup, when it's all done, is what you're gonna see most of, and the fact that a lot of the cracks close. We can't guarantee you every crack is gonna close, but that is our target, is to close cracks, get the doors working again, and leave you a nice clean house when we're finished. Okay, in those cases where it's unavoidable to jackhammer through the concrete, obviously it's gotta be patched back. Now, this is fresh concrete, so it's going to be a dark gray like this. As it ages, it's going to lighten up. It's going to become more whitish like this is. It will never, ever match back perfect again. So if you're needing something that's going to match perfect, your choices are going to be put a top coat of some kind over it that's readily available, or you got to replace all the concrete. And typically, that's just not cost effective. And quite frankly, you give it a few years, you won't even notice these patches anymore. All right, so it took a few days. The job is complete. And I know there's a lot of companies out there who are telling you, oh, we can do your job in one day or two days. Well, in some cases, yes, we can. But if you want it done right, you got to make sure you go deep enough. That takes time. The other thing is, 
you got to make sure you're not putting pier on top of pier when you're driving them. You got to keep some separation. All that takes time. But this job has cleaned up great. Uh, you know, now it's just up to the homeowner to maintain and keep things watered. Yeah, and once once we've dug around the, the plants, if we have to remove any of them, put them back, we do our best to make everything look like we weren't there in the first place. But it's also important to keep in mind we've disturbed the soil in the area where those plants were. And when you water them, the water's going to go away from the roots a little more readily than what it did before. So you got to water them a, a little bit more than what you did before we disturbed them. Exactly. You got disturbed soil. It allows the water to flow out and that watering will also help consolidate the soil over time. So you may get a little bit of settlement. Don't be surprised. You know, we can come in and, and fill up a, a hole that has settled a little bit or something. But really, that watering is, is critical. That's to maintain it. You know, one of, the, one of the biggest questions we get asked a lot of times is, where did the name come from? Well, we'll start in September 1978 when the boss walked in and told me, I'm going to send you back to Minnesota. I said, no, you ain't. I had a crane operator named Charlie West. He'd been in the dirt business, so he talked me into buying a drag line and a couple of dump trucks out of the 401k profit sharing or whatever it was, and going into business with him. That was fine. Sounded like a good idea. Did it. We got a sand pit out here and going great guns. I was out selling sand and everything, uh, going great until the second time I come out there and found Charlie not only loading our trucks, but loading other people's trucks just drunkard and blazes. I said, Charlie, this is enough. We got a split. We had our split. I sold him the drag, drag line and one dump truck on credit against everybody's advice. But I knew Charlie well enough to think I'd get my money, and, and I did. We remain friends. I went the other way. I kept the name Do West. I'm the Do in Do West. So Charlie West went the other way, stayed in the dirt business, and I went into the uh, concrete and foundations and underground. Uh, I saw the need for foundation repair around here. That was always in my mind. I saw all the problems they had and being underground as much as I was in tunneling and laying pipe and such as of which brought me to Pasadena, saw the demand and uh, kind of went that direction and it just developed from there. All right, we've gone over the piling installation and a little bit of history on the Due West name and age of the company and everything. But let's talk some preventative maintenance to make sure that the rest of your home stays maintained. One of the main causes of foundation movement on a structure is changes in moisture content and trees are a big part of that. I'm a fan of trees for a home because it brings up home value, but you've got to do some preventative maintenance around a tree to keep it from being a problem with your structure down the road. The interesting thing with tree roots is most of them will grow in the first 18 inches of soil. So when we dig our trench 36 inches deep, you can see the bottom part of our trench here has no tree roots. But when you get to the top 18 inches, all of the feeder roots from the tree are growing towards the home and drawing moisture out. When we install a root barrier, I use a solid polyethylene barrier in the root barrier. And the reason we use that is it keeps the tree from drawing moisture through a porous barrier. It actually holds the moisture on the home side of the tree. But we run 36 inches deep so when the tree roots want to grow again, they would have to dive deeper into the soil, which diminishes them before they could grow laterally across again. Typically, when we dig our root barriers, I usually want to dig them by hand. And the reason for that is if we use mechanical devices to dig our trench, if we run into an irrigation line or a water line or an electric line, it'll cut right through it before we even know it. Digging it by hand, Due West can usually work around these obstacles. The polyethylene material that we use for our root barrier is fiber reinforced. It makes it extra tough. This stuff can be used to, to line ponds. What we're using it for is a root barrier between the structure and the tree to keep the tree roots from drawing the moisture out on the structure side. When we install our polyethylene root barrier, it drapes over the top of the trench, goes down to the bottom of our trench, and then turns and is redirected back towards the tree. And the reason we do that is once 
we bury our barrier here, the tree roots are going to want to grow again. If they hit the barrier and still want to grow, they may turn and go downwards and be redire redirected away from the structure back towards the tree rather than drawing moisture out from the home side of the tree. Now that we've got our root barrier installed, we've backfilled the hole or the trench and the root barrier has been cut off just below the surface of the soil that you see here. If we pan over to the edge over here, you can see right where the root barrier is. Once we do our final cleanup on the top and put the foliage back in, it, it'll be hard to tell this root barrier ever was installed. Now that we've finished with our root barrier and got it all cleaned up, it's hard to tell we even put the root barrier here. You will be able to tell it most likely in the future when we start hitting a drought period. You'll notice on the tree side of the root barrier, the soil level will probably still drop where that tree's drawing moisture out. On the house side where we're trying to protect the soil, it'll stay raised up because the moisture's gonna stay on that side. You know, there's a lot of things that can cause foundation problems. These great trees that are lining the street, they take out a tremendous amount of moisture out of the soil. When the soil dries out, it shrinks, it gets wet, it expands again. And that's the reason when you drive through old neighborhoods, it's like a roller coaster going up and down every place there's a tree. You know, there's a lot of other things that can cause foundation problems as well. Well, you got plumbing issues underneath homes. If you've got issues with your plumbing, you get moisture imbalances where part of it's wet and part of it's dry. It always comes back to that moisture problem. You can't have the moisture in the soil changing constantly, and it's impossible to keep it dry all the time. That's the reason we recommend irrigation systems for the foundation, not just for the yard, but that irrigation system for the foundation keeps that moist soil around the foundation consistent, and that's really a key factor in protecting the home. And along with doing the moisture maintenance with an irrigation system, we have drainage issues where you got areas that are too wet and you've got to make sure you get that water where it flows out away from the structure. It always comes back to the same thing, moisture. It is not your friend. Whether it's a leaking roof or too much around the foundation or not enough around the foundation, moisture on a structure is detrimental. Now, at Due West, we can also take care of retaining walls and other issues that cause foundation problems because that's what we do every day of the week is take care of foundations for everybody throughout the great state of Texas. Well and because we have so much knowledge on all these items it's real important when you call a foundation repair company to come out and look at a problem you've got a company that knows all of these issues and are trained in these things and that's why we always say when you want the best call Due West. Yeah, and if all you're addressing is what happened to the foundation, you know, throwing some piers on it to pick it up, you didn't address the root cause of the problem. You're destined to have more trouble. You gotta deal with a trustworthy company. So if you're having a problem with your foundation, please give us a call. We'll get you back on a solid foundation. A solid foundation is due way. Get you back on a solid foundation, a solid foundation.